The Small Business Show, episode 185 for Wednesday, August 22nd, 2018. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for this episode include... Gusto, where at gusto.com slash SPS, you can get a free three month trial of their benefits, payroll, and HR service. And Text Expander, where at textexpander.com slash podcast to get 20% off your first year. We'll talk more about that in a minute here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm Shannon Jean. I'm excited to be here today, Dave. I am too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy. The well, summer's uh, coming to an end, right? It is. And, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I, our kids are going off to school. I think your kid, your daughter already uh, left, right? My daughter left on uh, yesterday, uh, well, a couple of days ago, and yeah. then uh, my son's been back into high school for. Uh, oh, that's right. Week, you guys week. start early out there. Yeah, yeah, about a week or so. So yeah. it's uh, kind of it's kind of getting back into the routine, so to speak. Yeah. My daughter um, leaves for the first time on Friday for her freshman year, so that's not going to be an easy day. Oh, uh, yeah, that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> it is rough. Yeah, but that's it's great. I, yeah, I always yeah, say that's a rough. good thing, like you know, oh, yes, it, because yes. it means that we actually enjoy each other, and we're not nobody's yep. looking to get out, you know. So that's a good thing. But it, that yeah, makes it great. Just makes those particular moments suck a little bit extra. But that's a good thing. Yes, it's a, it's a good outcome. It is. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Hey, I want to talk. Uh, one of the things I really love when you open the show is the the that tagline "Buy for and about small business." And and the thing about it, or one of the things I love about it is we are you and I, Dave, uh, engrossed in you know this small business culture all the time. It's not like we're you know we ran a bunch of businesses and now we're done and we're sitting and talk about it. But uh, you know we talk about our businesses. We always do a pre-show discussion how things are going with your company here, company A, company B. Uh, you know, and and I I love that about it. And as we're you know, learning, making our mistakes, looking at new opportunities. You know, we share that here on the show. So uh, it's you're getting uh, real world and real time yeah. uh, advi- advice from us. Um, and, and it's exciting. I mean, I mentioned to you last week, Dave, you know, I'm, I'm involved in the, a new software venture that has got me, you know, awake at night thinking of new ideas, which I love, you know, doing. I, and, I love uh, that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's totally cool. Uh, the fun part of the business. Oh, got to come up with a name. We got to come up with the website. Got to come up with the logo. I mean, it's I love so that fun. stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I'll be sharing that as as we go along, and uh, you know, during the during the coming months, and you know, just some information on that. A. Cool. We're a critically important part of of all of our small business, and that's cash. Uh, we've talked about it here a bunch of times, but it's worth revisiting again because there are a lot of you know companies that even though they may be very profitable, they run out of cash and they wind up in the dustbin and uh, and close. So we're going to spend the next half hour or so talking about that. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. It is the yeah. most important thing, and and I will say this, you know, if you're if you've been running you know businesses for 10, 15 years. It, it's easy to say, oh, I don't need this episode, right? I, I already know this lesson. Well, I have thought that way in the past and I've caught, I've gotten caught uh, that way in the past. When you get too comfortable and you stop worrying about cash, you can run into yeah. a problem real fast without realizing that you're heading there. So yeah, yeah definitely. It, it, it is that, you, you know, you said you just started something new that that's a great reminder that you have to stay focused on the cash flow and 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 you'll do it in all your you know sort of you know more mature businesses too perhaps a little i don't know if if you take your eye off the ball all that often but well, you know if no. if you do like it's a good reminder oh yeah 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 no yeah. you got to just you got to be there 100% of the time yeah yeah and one of the issues i have and i still have to this day is i often fall in love with the the PL, the profit and loss loss statement and that it's great because it kind of gives you one measurement of your of your business, but you also need to fall in love with your cash balance and your you know cash flow statement because at at any time you need to know what's going on with your cash. So uh, I have a tip for you, and it's yes. something that I taught my I had to I had to force myself to do, and I, I started this not that long ago, probably certainly after we started the show, maybe maybe three years ago or something. Uh, I don't let if I go in to our accounting package or whatever. 
And the first thing I want to do is look at the P&L. Right. Because like you yeah, said, you can yep. fall in love with that. It's so uh, yeah. easy and it makes life makes life look rosy. And you can the thing is, you can manipulate it to make life look rosy. Yeah. Yeah. So I am not allowed. I do not allow myself to look at the P&L until I've looked at a cash flow report, a cash flow that's forecast great. and logged into the bank and looked at the balance. That's right there. Then and only then do I allow myself to pull up the P&L. Yeah, that that is a huge. Uh, I mean, that's a great bit of advice because what I find is I'm looking at the P and L to see how good I can feel about how mm-hmm. things are going, and 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 that's important. No, but it's good. You, yeah. yeah, yes, it is. But that looking at your cash balance and and the cash flow statement is is a great place to start to where you know okay I can now I can move beyond that because right. if you can't move they, beyond the cash flow and your and your you know your you're in a cash crunch, you just stop because it doesn't matter how much you say your, your profits are, you, you're, you're having another problem altogether. You've got a different, and, and, and there have been times, thankfully they don't happen often these days, but certainly there are times where I like, Oh, I want to look at the P and L. Oh, got to follow my, got to be, you know, diligent here. And I go do my things and I'll be looking at cash and suddenly, you know, a couple of hours have gone by and I haven't pulled up the P&L because I'll look at the cash and realize, oh, crap, we got to like we got to shuffle some things around here. We got to make this work. And and you solve the problem that you had versus just looking at the thing that makes you feel good inside. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I have this down in a further uh, section of my notes, but I think it's a good time to mention it. Uh, you know, most modern accounting packages, whether you're using QuickBooks or Account Edge or something more sophisticated, you know, Dynamics or something, uh, you know, they'll they'll kick out this data for you and and produce this statement of cash flows whenever you need it. However, if you're not keeping up to date with your the data that you're putting into the accounting software, it's not going to be very helpful right. because it, it the the software needs this data to see what's going on to give you that projection and tell you you know what's going on and how what the cash flow looks like. So you want to keep up to date. And I've had this problem before. I use lots of different databases and FileMaker, and That's you're doing stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, and you have to make sure those imports like waiting a month to do imports of data. If you're selling like, you know, I've always sold in marketplaces and then our website and all these different things. So you have to combine a lot of sales data, but if you wait a month, well, you're going to be a month behind. So, you know, you, you need to move, or I would suggest moving to like a weekly import of data or some sort of automation that can get it even in there faster for you. Um, whatever works. So that, that, I think that's a real important thing to point out. Yep. Yep, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and you can uh it, you mentioned FileMaker and QuickBooks. Officially QuickBooks has no import functionality, but but all those IIF files that you could have generated years ago, it still definitely supports all of those and you yeah. can you it's it's relatively easy to generate those with FileMaker. So if you if you are keeping things in FileMaker, um you can certainly spit those out in a format that QuickBooks can slurp right in. We do that all the time and it it Oh, it's it, great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I use account Edge just because that's what I've used for a long, long time. Used to use QuickBooks, but Account Edge really is it, it, it sets up imports really well. Just oh, do texture, not CSV files, and uh, we we dump tons of data, uh, and and it's relatively straightforward. And we've automated a lot of it with scripting and that kind of yeah. stuff. So that, that that's definitely worth studying and looking at uh, improving because the the sooner you're going to get that data, you're going to have a more accurate picture of of your inflow and outflow. Yep. Um, and, and before we go any further, I, I, I want to make it clear here, you know, what else is, okay, what's more important, profit or cash? Well, at this stage of the game, cash is more important because without it, you're nothing. And you, you, you know, plenty of profitable businesses have shut down for lack of working capital. I, the way um, I like so to look you, at it is profit, your P&L, but really your profits are important to other people. Cash is important to you. Yeah, I like it. Right? Because yeah, the banks, yeah. when you're going to yeah. get a loan or whatever, they want to see your P&Ls. If somebody's going to acquire your business, they want to see your P&Ls, you know. And, yeah. and that makes sense because you can see the overall sort of big picture health of things. But everybody knows when you're looking at that, that you can make those look rosy. The cash flow, cash doesn't lie. That You either yeah. have it or you don't. Yep. Yeah, and I and I think if you're if you're monitoring your cash and you see that cash flow is healthy and you've got enough working capital to keep you know getting everything paid, the profits are going to follow because that's what's generating. Uh, uh, 
you know, your inflow than your outflow. So, um, uh, just keep, keep your eyes on that thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think that it's really important, you know, what's going on with your cash each day, uh, if, or by, you know, weekly uh, at a minimum, you need to know what's, what's going on. Um, and so let, let's roll in, you know, positive cash flow. What's coming in the door paid for by sales. But the thing to make one thing to keep in mind is if you're giving out net terms, that's really going to impact your cash flow in a negative way. Uh, and, and it's a very common thing to do it, but because uh, you have to with so many different kinds of customers. But I would say you also need to be focused on matching your receivable terms that you're giving to your customers with your payable terms that you're paying to your suppliers. And I've always had this problem because most of my suppliers, because I've been an inventory guy most of my life, they want the money up front. They're not going to give you terms because there's somebody right behind you willing to uh, pay cash. So it's a wire transfer out. And then you have all this product coming in the door that some of it's going to get paid for right away when you sell it. Some of it's going to be, you know, paid for on net terms. So it's really going to dramatically impact, uh, you know, your cash flow. And for us also buying lots of, uh, you know, consumer electronics product that had to be refurbished that further would slow things down and it would be your work in progress. How much cash is tied up in your work in progress? Can you walk out in your inventory and say, wow, you know, there's a hundred or whatever, $25,000 worth of product sitting here that I can't sell because it has not been prepared to sell yet. That's one thing that can really impact you. And that's something that you can control. If you have all this cash sitting there, you, you can shift your, your workforce over there to get through that quickly. So you can, uh, you know, increase your, your cash flow For sure. Yeah. 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 yeah you got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, negative cash flow. Uh, what, what's your outflow? It's like, say, what are you, what are you spending on? The, you know, what does it cost to have all your employees there each day? Uh, how much cash are you spending on your inventory? What are your accounts receivables look like? The work in progress that I mentioned and your expenses, you know, what's your rent, utilities. Um, and right here, I want to take a little break and, and mention uh, one of the things that can really impact your cash flow is avoiding shiny things. Oh. And I tell, the, I tell this from experience, you know, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should be buying furniture from the company that's going out of business not from a furniture store. You should be buying, you know, uh, technology that's maybe one generation behind or maybe yep. even two. Don't, uh, yeah, know, resist you, the urge, yes. especially as you start making a little bit of money. Resist yeah, the urge to, to go from, you are a creator, right? As you're, yep. I mean, you started a business, you, you're in some way you are creating something. You're either creating wealth for people, you're creating jobs, be careful to always stay a creator. And just because a little bit of money comes in, don't quickly become a consumer, right? Oh, yeah. If yeah. You know, and I mean, there's, there, you know, this isn't a binary thing, right? It's, it, there's a, there's a continuum between creator and consumer because you need to do some consuming in order to create, but make sure you're always leaning on the side of being a creator, which means thinking creatively, right? And like you said, Buying the stuff secondhand or, you know, like buying computers that re that are refurbed or whatever. Yep. Like these things are OK, especially nowadays. You know, man, it makes such a difference. It's yeah, a it really huge does. Huge difference. Yeah. That can yeah. that alone can be your profit margin right there. Yeah, right absolutely. There, right there. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, just remember, uh, you know, Amazon, you know, they're used, they're using, I still think they're using, you know, doors, old doors for desks, you know, up on saws, you know, sawhorses or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the mentality you need to have. You need to, to know, and, and it's kind of like lifestyle creep, you know, where if you start making more money, you buy a bigger house, you buy a better car and all of a sudden you're, be, you're beholden to all this stuff. Yes. Well, you can do the same thing in your business. So don't do that. You know, just, yeah, just, just stop, it. just stop, just stop right there. And, and don't buy it. Maybe, you know, uh, sometimes it does pay to lease equipment. There's a lot of tax benefits to that. Um, you know, but, but think about it, you know, what can you get by with that will still look great? You know, some things obviously you have to buy, you know, and prepare, you got to look professional, of course, but there's a lot of stuff in your business that I would, I would suggest you can really save some money on. Yeah, you can do and, it on the cheap and nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and get your employees thinking like that too. The last thing you want, you know, is employees. Oh, 
oh, we're, we're fat. You know, we can go buy this. I, I, I need, I don't know. I, I can't tell you how many auctions I've been to where this company ran out of cash and everybody's sitting on a thousand dollar chair, you know, on a Herman Miller Aaron chair, yeah. which I happen to be sitting on right now as I'm recording. But I think I paid like 200 bucks for mine at one of those auctions. And, and the, the auction circuit that I traveled around on for, you know, years and years and years really taught me that it's like, wow, look at these, this is a huge company. They made all the, they made the same mistake and they make it over and over and over again. Save your cash. Yep. For sure. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only way that yep. said, uh, and I will use this as a segue to talk about our two sponsors today, but that said, sometimes there are some things that are well worth you spending your cash on. And with that, I'd like to talk about our first sponsor, which is Gusto. Gusto, man, this is such a cool service, right? It, you know, payroll and benefits are hard. These are, you know, cash outflows and you want to manage them very carefully when you're, especially when you're a small business, but you don't have time to be an expert in things like taxes and regulations and all the old school payroll providers just aren't built for the way you work today, right? Gusto. Yep is making payroll benefits and HR super, super easy for the small business. Modern technology does all the heavy lifting, so it's easy for you to get it right. You don't have to be a big company to get great technology, great benefits, and great service for your team, right? PC Mag and Fit Small Business have called Gusto the best payroll for small business. And they say nine out of 10 users say Gusto is easier to use than other payroll solutions. You got to check this out. Okay, so here's how it works. Because you really don't want to have to hire an HR expert, right? This is what you contract with Gusto for. And you can do it and get three months free. So to help support this show, here's a special link to use that gets you that three months free and lets you lets them know we sent you. Gusto's uh, offering this deal. It's a exclusive limited time deal. Sign up today and you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Just go to gusto.com slash SBS. Again, that's gusto.com slash SBS to get your three months free. Our thanks to Gusto for sponsoring this episode. Another service that's totally invaluable is text expander. And if you visit textexpandercom slash podcast, you'll get 20% off your first year of this piece of software that helps you communicate smarter. You can create snippets for the things you type or think about all those things you copy and paste. How many times have you gone in just yesterday? I wasn't using text expander. I sent an email out to somebody. I had a great idea about bringing on a new partner. And by the way, it worked. Uh, and I, I sent this email and then I thought, you know what? This other company would be great at partnering with us in exactly the same way. So what did I do? I went into my email and I didn't even copy paste. I said, send again. And I meticulously went through the email, changed the names, changed some of the text because it was going to be the way we were going to work together. And I hit send. Guess what? I didn't change the to address. Ah, uh. Yeah. <laughs> Text expander would have saved my butt. Now, thankfully, the embarrassment was was worth it. But uh, it's not always worth it. <laughs> so use text expander. Trust me on this. I sh I have it. Like I, there was no excuse for me not to do this because I'm gonna I'm gonna send the same thing out a couple more times. I definitely. It's like it costs nothing. It's like it's like ten maybe it's, maybe it's two seconds to add this as a snippet. It, it, to the time that it costs to add a snippet is nothing. So you got to check this out. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast for 20% off your first year. Create your snippets. That way you're not copying and pasting and you're ridding yourself of the opportunities for terrible embarrassment. Let me be a lesson to all of you. Cautionary si tale. <laughs> sign up textexpander.com slash podcast. 20% off your first year. Our thanks to Text Expander and the folks at Smile for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. <laughs> that's good stuff. Those yeah. Are, yeah, that's awesome. God, that's awesome. It sucked, man. Oh, uh, and I knew it. Like, I, I don't know. I went back into my outbox five minutes later and it was like, oh, okay. Well, now I get to send this guy a third email that starts with, well, now this is embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah. That's very right. funny. Yeah. That's kind good. of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. That's funny, right. Funnier Listen. for you than for me. <laughs> well, funny now, right? Yeah, yeah. funny now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It yeah, actually all now. worked out. But, you know, sometimes embarrassment, you know, it shows, it shows humility. It shows humanity. And that, that, that actually can work yeah. out. Yeah. I won't let that particular yep. mistake happen again, even though it did work, but 
um, you know, there's a benefit there. So anyway. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've talked about cash flow, the importance, uh, positive, negative cash flow, this kind of stuff, uh, and inevitably, uh, and well, you know, no doubt everyone listening is much smarter than I am, but even the, the, that being said, you're going to hit a point where you're going to be in a cash crunch. If your business is growing, especially growth is very expensive Mm -hmm. and, and tough to keep up with sometimes, you know, it's like having a tiger by the tail because you're just focused on growth and ramping things up and you can easily take your eye off your, you know, your, your cash balance. Um, so, you you need some stuff to help you bridge the gap when you're, you know, cash is in trouble. And um, I'll never forget when I was just getting started in the Apple business and uh, didn't have access to much money. And I met a guy uh, and he's like, hey, come out, come to one of these auctions. And I remember flying out there and I was like, man, I just, you know, I don't have, I just don't have access to capital. This is a great deal. What do I do? And this guy, you know, he pulled out a stand. Like uh, wait, say uh, that say that again. He pulled out a stack of a stack of what? You 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 cut out your. Uh, I see your connect- We're going to yeah, get that yeah, Ethernet cable for you before next week. I we are. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Let me next time. Uh, he pulled out a stack of credit cards, and it was like you know two inches thick, uh, or maybe a little more. And he's like, here, you know, this is four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Let me show you how to do this. And I was like, oh, because I had you know not much back then. A bank would just laugh at me; they wouldn't do anything. So. You know, using credit cards to help you through short term cash crunch or, you know, stuff is is a great thing to do and also can help, you know, uh, towards establishing your charmed life, which we've talked about here on the show a lot with the points and uh, affinity cards, that kind of stuff. Um, But that that can definitely help you. You know, the other thing you need to do is if you're if you have an inventory, you need to look at your products and and say, what's sitting here? What's been here for a while? What do I need to get rid of and dump to generate cash? And and again, and focus so much around the p l If it's been sitting there and you can't move it, move it out. And don't worry about the loss on your books as much as the positive impact that's going to have on your cash flow, because that's what you're really looking for. If you have, you know, stuff you paid a hundred bucks for, and it's only worth 75 bucks now, well, it's not going to increase in value past that hundred bucks in anytime soon. So take the hit and move on and, and, you know, live, live on that cash. Yeah. I would say, I would say uh, adding to your dump the junk uh, theme here is accept the concept of a sunk cost, right? Yes. You've already yes. spent the hundred bucks. So it's not like you're spending that again to sell it for 75. That hundred is gone. Do you want 75 or do you want zero? That's the yes. question you ask yourself. That's it. Yeah. That's the only yeah. And if you, yeah. And, and, you know, if you hold on to that product another few months or six months, maybe it's only worth 50 bucks, not exactly. 75. So you, you, you know, you have to look at that stuff differently. And especially in an inventory business, it is a, a very good way to, to raise quick cash and also to use as marketing, you know, and get, get people's attention. It's just like, wow, they're really blowing this stuff out. You're going to get new customers that'll lead to other sales down the road. So, uh, I think that's a, it's a real important thing. And I would say, you know, you're talking about an inventory business and I would, I would have, if you asked me, do you run an inventory business? I would say, no, I I never have. I don't, you know, there's, there's, I mean, there's benefits obviously to, to doing this, but you know, there's also pitfalls because you're sitting on inventory. However, I absolutely run an inventory business. We sell ads. These are Ah, expiring pieces of inventory, right? If we didn't sell it and the podcast went out or the web, the web page got loaded, guess what? It was free. So, you know, when, when we have inventory, uh, you know, shortfalls or whatever, where we or sales shortfalls that leave us with lots of extra inventory, we do the same kind of thing. It's like, all right, cool. We'll put together a deal. If you're willing to buy X number worth, we'll give you, you know, whatever we'll, we'll, we'll give it to you. Maybe not. We won't say it's half price. We'll say we'll give you six for the price of three, but you got to sign by the end of the week because we need next week's inventory full. And I'm willing to, you know, take a little bit from the future because that's all I have uh, to, you know, to to back that up. Now, we don't do that all the time. Otherwise, that would just become the price. And that's the other thing to look at, right, is if you're constantly having to special off all of whatever you are selling, you have a new price. There is a new normal and your customers already know it. Yeah. You know, yep. so just accept sure. it and put it out there so that you can have the opportunity to special it out in the future at a thing that truly is a special price. Yeah. And and maybe it's uh, your 
you're only making it uh, available to certain customers. Uh, maybe it's kind of an, un, you know, not, you're not promoting it very much and I you're like just putting, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're not getting known as the blowout King or whatever. And, and uh, you know, lowering your, uh, you know, price point and also that bundling of, Hey, uh, we're running a promo. If you buy three, do whatever you get, you know, buy one, get one free, whatever it is. Uh, instead of having that perceived thing like, oh, well, this is all it's worth now. So there's there's ways to manipulate it. But the, in my experience, the hardest thing to get over is that thing in your head telling you, I spent a hundred bucks for those. I need to sell them for 120 or 125. That That's irrelevant. You know, uh, it, everything long will term, sell. Long term, yes, yes you, you do need yes. to do that. But. Oh, yeah. 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 But specifics, no. <laughs> you just yeah. got to sell and, it for what it's worth. That's right. And I always make the comment, you know, we always make our money on our buying what we bought. Everything will sell. Everything sells. It's just a matter of at what price. And so you need to move that product out. It's a great opportunity to to generate cash. The the other way to to kind of keep your cash is to slow down paying your accounts payable, you know, and to really look at who must get paid and you know, there have been many times where I would do weekly cash meetings with, uh, you know, my team and managers and say, OK, guys, or my accounting and who has to get paid because we're tight this week. And who can we push out? Can you push out, uh, you know, AT&T? Are they going to shut our phones off this week? No. Uh, if we push out, you know, the, I mean, are they going to keep the electricity on? No, we got to pay that, you know, yeah. that, all this kind of stuff. Really analyzing your bills and having a, a meeting and really adjusting, okay, who we're going to sell this, even when th- when things are good, that exercise can really help you and introduce a, a good structure and discipline in in paying your bills. I think is a really uh, uh, that's a great way to save your cash. I, I will say this uh, sort of as the counterpoint. To that. I I mean I do that too. I think you have to sometimes you have to, and and like you said, at all times it's not necessarily a bad practice, but. If you find yourself in that scenario where it is, you know, an emergency sort of thing where you're saying we have to do this, uh, think, make sure you're also coming up with the solution because kicking every can down the road is, is will eventually result in, in an insurmountable amount of debt that your business clearly cannot overcome. Right. And and you need to be careful of that. So sometimes it's OK, we can kick these cans down the road. We can get to positive yeah. positive cash flow. But those are coming due. And do we what can we cut out, not just kick down the road? Like so you got to pay electricity, you got to pay your you know your phone bill. But is there some recurring expense that you can cut f- long term forever or for a while in order to buy yourself that that positive cash flow in the future, and that yeah, no, it's I, never I an easy important. decision to make, right? Because you yeah. you know you've you you've been frugal and you've signed up for these things and hired the people that you need to hire and all that stuff, and then sometimes it's like, well, it, well something's got to go. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and and things hap- things happen. You know, uh, I could I could tell you the story. Uh, you know, where I had a customer do a chargeback on a seventy-five thousand dollar credit card purchase. Oh. That. That's uh, I, I would tell you, but it's still I'm I'm still a little shell shocked from it because you have to scramble immediately because all of a sudden what you thought you had in the bank you know is sucked out and and then you've got to okay now what do I do uh, and you can have that conversation with your people you owe money to hey I just had a customer pull this crazy thing it's never happened before uh, and and they'll you know oh okay I understand that how much time you need so communication maybe a, a, another I think communicating with your vendors suppliers about money um, your bank all that kind of stuff very very important uh, especially on those short-term things yeah you know? yeah it, it's it, good to know, have a, a, a communicating with your vendors is especially important when you are in one of those scenarios when you cannot pay them when they're expecting to be paid. Yeah. Uh, but in order to make that work, you need to communicate with your vendors at all times. 
and, and not, not just daily. when it's not, not just when, when it's, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. it's Dave or hey, it's Shannon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, right. he only calls when he needs to not pay me. Yeah. Awesome. Right. You know, you don't yeah. want that rep. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and I, and I think that goes to the the concept of treating your vendors like they're your customers. And, and we've talked about that on the show. I've mentioned it a bunch of times, because if you have that good relationship with them, uh, then when things do go wrong, they're going to give you a little bit more leeway. So yep. it's really worth worth your time. Uh, you know, on the long term for cash flow things, you know, lines of credit are fantastic and really can help you manage when the cash gets tight. And but it's important, just like Dave was saying about not getting in too deep, you need to be able to pay that money back to that line of credit. If you just keep sucking it out, you're going to wind up uh, in the hole too much, whether it's a bank line of credit, whether you have a PayPal working capital loan, other, you know, small business loans, that that cash has to go in and out. So, if you can't pay it back, it's symptomatic of there's something else that's wrong. Yep. Uh, and yeah, it's a know. nice it's a nice rip cord to be able to pull. Oh yeah. You know, yep. in in that moment when you need it. But I've always, I mean, there have been times when I've intentionally used the line of credit maybe to build up some credit history or whatever. Sure. And and it's like, okay, we're just going to do this, and yeah, it's stupid. We'll pay a little bit of interest, but long term, it's worth it. We have the cash flow. You know, we didn't need to, but we did it anyway. And then there's those times where it's like, oh, holy crap. We need to use like, there's the line of credit. Thank goodness it's there. Thank goodness. Yeah. And here's the tip, right? We went and got it when times were good because the bank's probably not going to give you a line of credit the day exactly. you actually need to use it. Um, but when you pull that ripcord, you know, I know that it's the same kind of thing I was just saying. You need to come up with the long term solution. Like, it's good that you have this, but something else needs to hurt if you're going to, if you're going to do this, cause it's, it, you can't just take this as the easy way out and then think, Oh, great. No oh, problems yep. are solved. Cause they're not solved or right. Well, the, yeah. the, and one of the things you can do with the line of credit, if you notice it, that it's just kind of built up or it hovers, let's say you have a, whatever, a hundred thousand dollar line of credit and you, you can't quite get it paid down past 75 grand, you know, it's just kind of, eh, we're just kind of stagnant. We're not, you know, we don't not generate enough cash. Talk to your banker. Cause often, Sometimes what they'll do is allow you to take that 75 grand and they call it terming it, terming it out. So you can uh, convert it to a term loan and say, look, I'll pay the 75 back over three years at a lower interest rate. And uh, you just make monthly payments automatic. You know, they're going to yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah, impact yeah. your cash flow again, but it, it brings discipline and gets you to pay that. The, the thing to be careful of is then you can't go back. It's going to free up that 75 grand. You don't jump right back in and borrow up yeah. to that. You know, you're going to wind up in this vicious cycle. Um, so, so you, there's ways to help you add some discipline. Uh, Cause as you can tell, I'm, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world. And I have used this method a number of times to force me to get those credit lines paid down, which has worked out well. Huh? I've never, I've never done that. I, I've never let myself get in that scenario. And I, I don't say that judgmentally about yeah, anyone other than me. Like there, there, it, looking back, there are times where it's like, you know what, if I had taken on extra debt, uh, I could have grown things faster. Like you said, growth is expensive and yeah. I may be in a better position today than I was, you know, than I am because I, I took on that risk and, and managed that. But, but that's an interesting thing. I've never been in the scenario. I didn't even, I mean, I suppose if I Works thought about good. it, yeah, terming it out makes yeah. perfect sense. I mean, it, the bank's going to do whatever yeah. they can do to get that money back. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. So. Well, and they're, you know, the bank is looking for an overall percentage relationship with you. Right. They, you know, they want as much as they can get at a certain percentage. So if you'd say to them, Hey, uh, how about we turn this out over three years, five years, whatever, whatever they'll do, depending yeah. upon how you handle it. Uh, you can, it can add to your basket of business that you're bringing to them, which, you know, when you want to increase your line of credit, if you're doing, especially in the, again, in the inventory business, we're always need, Hey, I have this great opportunity, but I need X and I don't have it. You want to get and do this deal with me and that, that kind of stuff. But the, the overall thing here, I, I think, one kind of overreaching concept is to have good cash flow, you need to measure all this stuff, everything. You know, what what's going on with your payments? What's going on with your receivables? What's going on? How fast is your inventory turning? Um, you know, how fast, yeah, how fast are the customers paying their bills? If you don't track this stuff, there's no way you're going to know anything. You're going to go off your gut, which is 
not always right when it, especially when it comes to this accounting stuff. I can tell you from experience, it's not always right. Um, and you know, like your employees, you know, what are your employee expenses all the time? Are you just at the edge where you're paying overtime because you don't quite have enough work for a new employee, but you know, the, the, your existing employees are each doing a little bit of overtime to pick up? I love to be right there because then you're like, well, I'm not adding a new employee and all those expenses and, and overhead that's with it. And everybody else is getting a little overtime. They can make a little bit of money. But eventually, that overtime is going to exceed the cost of adding another employee. Right. When that happens, when that happens, hire another employee. And then, you know, peak up if you're growing and hit that ceiling again and just measure everything. And you, you have to take the time to study this stuff. And I am the worst at it because I'm always thinking, oh, action, action. That's how I make my money. You know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But just sitting down and looking through this stuff and asking questions and getting help from your bookkeeper or accountant and, and looking at that is going to teach you and help you with your cash flow, which is going to keep things healthy. Profits will follow as you're bringing in that cash. It's it's going to happen for you. Yeah. 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 No, it, it you know, I, I forget who it was. It wasn't me that said it, but I, I, rem, I have to remind myself to live by this. That which is measured is managed. And, and yeah. it, it's true, right? You know, as long as you're I'm measuring sure. this stuff, it, it, you will wind up managing it. You're aware of it. it. You know, just the, the act of, of intentionally going and looking at how this stuff happens means now it's, it's, it's there. It's a thing as opposed to, like you said, you know, it's easy to just, well, whatever, you know what, uh, it's the end of the month. We still have some money. That's great. Let's do it again. You know, that, yeah. uh, that, that works. I mean, it can work. I'm a, I'm raising my hand. I'm a testament to that at times, but, yeah. Yeah. but it, it's not going to help you grow. It's not going to put you in the position you need to be in. So, yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah. So, you know, we'd love your feedback, your questions. Tell us, uh, you know, how you manage your cash. Uh, tell us what we got wrong, what we got right. Feedback at businessshow.co uh, or come talk in the uh, small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. There's three or 400 other business owners in that group that would love your feedback and love to answer your questions. Yeah. And thanks for being with us today, folks. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks to our sponsors. Gusto, of course, at gusto.com slash SBS. Textexpander.com slash podcast. Check them out. That helps us help you keep living that charmed life. See you next week.